All right, welcome back for episode 118 of the Freight 360 podcast. Today's episode is going to be all about TMSs, and we, we've had so many questions and a lot of conversations recently around the the tech side of brokerage. And you know, people ask what TMS should I use? What should I look for in a TMS? And we're going to break all that stuff down in today's episode, and with a special guest too. So, but hey, if you're brand new here, welcome to Freight 360. We're glad you found us. Uh, if you've been with us for a while, welcome back, and make sure to share us with all your friends in the industry. And uh, you know, we, we got a new review I want to read here that um, we saw. It was this is Cody from YouTube on one of our latest videos said, "Y'all's and I apologize because I don't say y'all. I'm from uh, Buffalo, New York, but Cody said y'all's podcast and channel have seriously helped me learn so much about this industry. I'm fairly new to it, and I work for one of the larger three PLs in the U.S. Yeah, that one." Their training program helped me go from no knowledge at all to feeling fairly confident in my abilities. But what's really set me apart from my peers is the outside knowledge you guys have taught me. Currently in the process of closing my first customer, and I wouldn't have been able to do it so soon without the help from y'all. There's the y'all again. So thank you guys for everything, and keep on keeping on. All right. Well, thanks, Cody. That was a good one, Ben. I think that was the video that you put out uh, this past weekend. Yeah, freight brokerage sales tips, but it's 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 yeah. awesome getting that support now, and that people are able to actually get to where they wanted to go a little bit quicker, and that we're able to help them get there. Absolutely. So, hey, this podcast episode is brought to you guys by Rose Rocket TMS. Modern trucking companies need modern <clears throat> software. Say goodbye to spreadsheets, manual processes, and contentious phone calls with your partners or customers asking where their freight is. With the Rose Rocket transportation management software. You can automate every part of the order, from automated order entry to self-serve quoting to advanced dispatching and on-demand track and trace. Rose Rocket makes running your business easier and more efficient. Visit the link in the episode notes or if you're on YouTube, the description box to get the best price and learn how the Rose Rocket TMS can streamline your business operations. So without further ado, our special guest today from Rose Rocket is Rob Doherty. Rob, welcome to the show. We're glad to have you, man. Yeah, thanks so much. I'm, ha- I'm really happy to be here. I'm, I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you guys. Absolutely. So, hey, before we get into the, the content of today's episode on TMS talking, I just really quick for the listeners out there and anyone watching, um, give us a little bit of a background on you and on, on Rose Rocket. Just kind of set the stage so we know who you yeah. are and kind of what you're bringing to the table today. Yeah, sure. Um, so my name's Rob. I am a, a key account lead at uh, Rose Rocket. And so my job is really to make sure that um, the the customers that are signed up for Rose Rocket TMS are, are getting the value out of it that they, uh, they expect. So um, I'm, I'm in a good position to do this because I have 11 years of uh, trucking experience. Before Rose Rocket, I, uh, I quite accidentally found my way into the industry. I, I took a job that... Don't we all? <laughs> yeah, it's, not, it's true. It's a, it's, a common, uh, it's a common story. So I, you know, fresh out of school, didn't know which way was up or down and wasn't sure what I was going to do. Uh, took a, a what was supposed to be a contractual job um, as an OS and D and claims clerk of all of all things, at, you know, really the belly of the beast. And fast forward eleven years later, I was I was general manager um, of the company. And in, in you know, in between those years, I bounced around a lot. I basically uh, was in the hot seat for every department, from operations to uh, rating and pricing to back office stuff, and uh, and in the the in house brokerage that we had. So kind of got a really good sense of the lay of the land as far as uh, the, the industry goes. Um, and it got into my blood. It, it, you know, it got in my system. Uh, I couldn't, uh, uh, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't shake my love of it. So I stuck around, you know, um, I ended up at Rose Rocket though, as a result of coming to the, coming to this realization that the, the industry isn't really equipped with, um, modern software, uh, software that does, does the business justice, let's say. So, you know, during my tenure at the, at the, the carrier I worked at, um, I saw, you know, lots of different systems that did very specific, specialized things, pricing, ops, dispatching, etc. cetera. Um, but you know, it was like, you know, death by a thousand spreadsheets, right? There was yep. just <laughs> for every every system that uh, you had to solve, you know, X problem, pricing, doc, 
cross docking, etc. There was ten spreadsheets that that system would produce daily, just to pass information around. So I kind of realized that um, you know it's kind of nice that on my phone I can download an app that is for personal finances, and I can connect that to my banking uh, account. And those two systems play really nice together. Wouldn't it be nice if I had um, a, a TMS or other softwares within a trucking company, a brokerage company that did the same thing, that that played nice with one another, just like you know, all the people, all the humans uh, have to kind of play nice together to, to get stuff done. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And it's, it's always good. And we were talking about this before we started the, you know, recording today, but having a background in an industry before going to the sales side of it, I think it, it speaks volumes for someone's credibility. So uh, in addition to that, we're so happy to have you guys uh, sponsoring this episode and um, spo really sponsoring for about a month with us at this point. And Ben and I, we take it very seriously when we consider somebody as a, uh, you know, as, as a company, we'd endorse their products. So we, we took a deep dive look into Rose Rocket and I was blown away. There's cool. so many TMSs that pop up and that have popped up in the last decade that, you know, sometimes you're like, ah, it's another one. But um, no, I mean, you guys, how long has, has Rose Rocket been around? You're, mm -hmm. you're um, over five years yep. now. What are you guys, six years yep. in? Yep, heading into our, awesome. our sixth year. Yeah, which is uh, That's no, awesome. a great milestone. Cool. We're going to get more into that in just <laughs> a little bit. First, we've got to recap a little sports. Um, as most of you know, I'm a diehard Buffalo Bills fan, and I was at the Monday night game here in Orchard Park against the Patriots. And it was a windy, wet, cold, snowy, disgusting game overall. And the Bills offense performed the same as the weather did. So uh, Mac Jones and the Patriots completed two for three passes for 19 yards. Uh, it, so it finally resolved the game 14-10 to 10 Buffalo. If someone would have told me that the Bills defense would hold the Patriots to 14 points, I think everyone would sign on the dotted line saying, yep, Buffalo is going to take this game. But... Um, I don't know. Buffalo's offensive coordinator, Brian Dable, I don't think he lasts a whole lot longer on the Buffalo uh, staff unless uh, him and Sean McDermott, the, the coach, can get on the same page. So, Ben, on the, on the other note, your Steelers had a nice upset against uh, Absolutely. Baltimore. That was pretty sweet. Taking the one it's like point everyone victory. Else in the NFL did what they had to do for the Bills to do good, and the Bills couldn't show up. But and Exactly. The nice first upset. three quarters, the Steelers looked so-so at best and turned it on in the fourth. And then Harbaugh decided to go for the two-point conversion with, what, a handful of yes. seconds left, didn't get it, and that was the game. I mean, that you and I game. talked about this after. Like, I mean, hey, he knows his team better than anybody, but if your team is matched up and you literally manage the majority of the game, my call would have been to push it into overtime to have more minutes to play. But, hey. Yeah, keep your momentum. Yeah, because they were they – were, uh... The touchdown and extra point would have tied the game and put it into overtime. But yeah, Harbaugh said, "Let's go for the win," and um, couldn't do it. Either way, it's a. So, I mean, oh, it's wow. a great game all every year. It's probably one of the few games that I always look still look forward to. Just the rivalry and the it's always a tough game. They play it physical. Oh yeah. So Rob, as far as the uh, sports up your way, you're you're in Toronto. Yeah. What uh, mm. what's the up? I don't know. So what do you fall? What's your what's your team? What's your sport? No. Uh, if, if I didn't say the NHL, I think my passport would be revoked. So, <laughs> you know, I'm, yeah, I'm a hockey fan for sure. Nice. Well, uh, here in Buffalo, the Sabres and yeah. the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs have had a, quite an interesting history over the years. The Sabres, I think they're, they've won like three out of their last 20 games, so they're just not good. And, you know, pretty much everyone's falling off the bandwagon here. We can't even fill up the arena anymore. Yeah. But uh, I always liked when Toronto fans would come down for a, a game in Buffalo so I was fun. one of them for sure. I it, it was uh, you know the uh, it was always a fun trip to to head that way and watch one of those games. The rivalry was great. It's so close, yeah. you know. It's yeah, like, it's right there. It's like an hour and a half or two yeah. hours. Yeah. Take the QEW. And yeah. Boom. You're there. The That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Good stuff. How's uh how's Toronto doing this year? Have you been following them closely? It's it's you know it's been a lukewarm year. Let's call it. Um, it hasn't. Yeah. It, you know it's been typical you know bandwagon a lot of hockey to play still Not exactly i was gonna say it's early so i bite my tongue yeah yep hockey's like another, it's like baseball where you know the seasons are so long yeah. was there 82 games in hockey 162 in baseball or compared yeah. to you know nfl you got as of this year 17 games so one game doesn't mean as much in nhl like it does in you know football so well interesting stuff Always love my little sports talk. But before we get into the content, Ben, give a shout-out to our friends over at DAT. 
Taking the guesswork out of freight with DAT, the DAT Load Board Network is the largest on-demand freight marketplace in North America, connecting freight brokers with available capacity on any lane. Grow your business with tools that allow you to find new business partners, plus you can quickly qualify and onboard new carriers. And with the industry's leading freight rate data, you can make clear and confident pricing decisions. Check out the show notes for a free month of Power, Express, or Trucker's Edge. Absolutely. All right, so today's topic, TMSs. Um, so this is a, like I said earlier on, this is a question that we get so often is anything from what is a TMS to what TMS should I use and how much do they cost and what features should I be looking for? And what I will say is um, depending on who you are, what your company does and what you're looking for, not every TMS is for everyone, right? Like I've seen... I've seen asset-based companies that ask about a certain TMS, and that TMS only services brokerages, right? Um, or some that they want integration with, you know, the latest tech tools and API integrations with, you know, all, all these new products out there. And some of these TMSs, they don't have that capability. Um, some people ask, should I, you know, should I develop my own and mm. you know pay a million bucks to get a developer to to do that and manage it, or should I go with a um, a company that's an expert in the tech side and basically license it out to myself. So um, actually literally had a guy yesterday email me asking me about um, McLeod and some stuff there. And, you know, there's a million different ways to do anything on McLeod. It's confusing. And I basically replied and said, I, I don't know how much, you know, what to tell you to make it any better. There, you're absolutely right. There is a million ways to do all this stuff and uh, it's confusing. So, um, well, I guess first off, what, Let's talk about what a TMS is, because some of our listeners are, are fairly new. We've got some that are seasoned, but really, what is a TMS and what should it be used for? Rob, I'm curious what your take is on yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's in the most simple terms, it's a system that a company um, uses to kind of plan, execute, and then optimize the, the physical movement of, of goods. So, um, you know, shippers use TMSs, carriers use TMSs, brokers, of course, use TMSs. I think depending on what the, uh, the type of uh, uh, user uh, the company is, that kind of dictates what kind of functionality is in there. So if you're, if you're focused and you're thinking about, um, you know, whether your brokerage needs a TMS, you, then you're probably mostly concerned with how can this TMS allow me to create an issue quotes quickly? How can it uh, help me, you know, manage uh, my carriers, dispatch to my carriers, update the status of orders, uh, and of course, like generate payables and receivable, receivables. But you know, the, the flavor of that is kind of consistent across all the uh, different uh, you know types of TMSs out there: shipper, carrier, or broker. Uh, but fundamentally, I think that's what it is. So I want to, a follow on question mm. here is, is a TMS really needed? And the reason, and mm. the answer is yes, but I don't want to talk about that. But the reason I bring this up is I probably told this story a couple of times on our show, but I had a guy um, probably five or six years ago come to me from another brokerage to join mine. And I asked him, I was like, oh, so, you know, what TMS platform were you using before? Um, the company that I was with at the time, we had our own proprietary system. So I wanted to try and be able to relate whatever he was using to ours. And he's like, I use a pencil and paper. Yeah. Like he literally tracked yeah. everything manually, yeah. but he was an old school guy. Yeah. And he's like, I don't need to learn that. I don't need to learn that crap that you, yeah. that you young kids are all doing <laughs> with computers and technology yeah. these days. But it's it's funny because sometimes it's hard, it's hard to, you know, break old habits or change what you're used to and get someone to accept and adapt to a new platform or a new mm. way of doing things. So um, I think that the big reason here is efficiency, visibility. I mean, there, there's so many reasons as to why, but I'm curious for both Rob and Ben, you know, what is it about a TMS that makes it a, a must have, you know, on the efficiency side and streamlining your operations? What does that, uh, what does that look like? Ben, I don't know if you want to take a stab at that first, but I don't want to cut you no, off. Go ahead. Um, you know, I think you said something really interesting, Nate, about, you know, the, the types of, you know, brokers. There's, there's many, 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 many uh, different sort of like mindsets or approaches to brokerage and also um, whether or not a TMS is needed. So, you know, I, I mean, like, I, like I said at the beginning of the, uh, of the episode, my background's 
trucking, and I know that there is a place for those who are um, uh, just set with writing things down and using paperwork. And you know, if that's your shtick, if that's all you want, you know you ever want to be, then you know all the power to you, so to speak. Um, I probably got some salespeople listening to this uh, call from Rose Rocket turning over <laughs> in their grave <laughs> right now. But you, but you made a good point, Rob. I mean, it depends on where you want to go, yeah. right? And and the truth of the matter is some people that are stuck in their ways are going to be stuck regardless yep. of how great or how fast or how much better they yep. could be at whatever they're performing, right? Yeah. Because I, I think one of the biggest reasons a TMS is a must-have is it's the heartbeat of a brokerage. It right. literally organizes First off, it right. organizes everything. Yep. So where all of your shipments are, it that's where it is. Yep. The second thing it needs to do is it literally provides the basic function of a brokerage, which is taking a work order or a tender right from your customer, entering it into a system, and then being able to create another work order or tender to send out to your carrier at a different rate. Right. Yep. Without that ability, you are not a freight broker. Right. And TMS and is I wanna, fundamentally like. I want to add on to that too. So like. When you, when you talk about efficiency, mm -hmm. right? Think about all the other things that we need to do to mm -hmm. be a good, not just be a freight broker, but to be good and excellent mm -hmm. at being a freight broker, right? And that is to be fast in our right. responses to people, to be able to organize all of our information. For example, having notes on your carriers, right? Uh, being able to vet out a carrier super easily, being able to post out to the load boards quickly and not have to log in manually to DAT to put a right. load up there and then pull it down later, right? Being able to generate a rate confirmation at the click of a button and not have to type it up in, in a Word document and create a PDF and send it out, right? I mean, these are all little things that when you get them all into one place, one system, or this, this is what a TMS does, right? When you can do that, it saves you so much time, which, which allows us to do more of our job and then become more of a profitable broker. Absolutely. I mean, like what you're so, hitting I mean, on and describing is, is a brokerage with a growth mindset, right? So absolutely. if you want to grow your brokerage and you want to uh, make sure that you're doing so in a scalable way, you're not going to do that with the pen and paper system. You're, you're simply not. I don't think anybody from any camp would, would argue with that, right? You know, if you're yeah. spending time chasing email threads, chasing uh, status updates from your carriers, you know, double entering, triple entering data into, you know, this system or that system, you're, you're really getting in your own way. Well, and the thing yeah. is the biggest, the biggest reason brokerages can't grow or, and to be honest, even ones that want to grow, but aren't able to, right? The yeah. fundamental problem they have is because they don't have enough time. It's because yeah. it's being eaten up by right. all of the needs of yes. their existing customers. And yeah. what people don't think about is because they're small incremental points of time, right? right? For instance, I was taking somebody through a training this morning and I had them build out 30 loads, right? Well, the thing was, even just nuances, when you do that every day, if it takes you an extra two minutes for every load, that's an hour. If it right. takes you three minutes for every load, which seems like nothing when you're doing it, right? An extra yep. 60 seconds. The reality is, is you now spend three hours a day on that task, right? Yep. So when everybody out there is sitting there asking themselves, like, why aren't they able to get new business? Why aren't they yep. able to grow? Why can't they train the next employee so they can actually yep. take a vacation? It's always because yep. of time. Absolutely. And that problem is best solved through a transportation management system. It starts giving you those minutes on, and moments back. I want to add on to that, too. So I have worked for, we probably all have at one point in time, worked for a company that has great technology, and we work for companies that have had bad technology, right? And technology is one of the fastest advancing things that, that exists in our life today that if you're not on the curve, if you're not at least caught up mm. with the curve and you're behind it, you're at a terrible disadvantage. I always have desired to be, and I always recommend folks stay ahead of that curve, right? And st at least stay up to date with what's out there. Even if you haven't upgraded to, your, to, you know, to the latest and greatest just yet, know what's out there and have that in your mindset of where you want to be in three to five years. And Hey, to be where I want to be, I'm going to eventually have to have this and implement this integration right here. And I think, right I think to add to that, it's not only think about where you want to be, think about where your customers are going to be, right? Business is being done online. You know, business is not, um, is moving away from, it won't ever go away, of course, but it's being done, on, it's moving away from phone calls and, uh, you know, carrier pigeons, let's say. Uh, it's being, business is being done online, right? Reputations are online. Um, that's, that's where the world is moving. Well, so you bring up a good point there, Rob, and I, wa I wanna 
I want to elaborate on this, and I'm curious how Rose Rocket stacks yeah. up. So you talked about think about where you're, like where are your customers mm-hmm. going to be. Same thing with carriers too, right? Because that TMS is going to allow us to to act as the broker, right? The, the intermediary between the shipper and that motor carrier and that communication mm-hmm. and, and workflow process, right? So there's customers now that there's EDI, they're sending tenders over yeah. that way, or all their loads are all transmitted electronically now. It's right. not a phone call. Hey, I need a truck at 3 p.m. for this. Same thing with carriers. There's carriers that they want to be able to log in and see what loads you have available right. or have a, a, you know, a repetitive process of every Tuesday and Thursday, I'm taking you know these couple yep. of lanes from this brokerage and I want to be able to do that quickly online or through their TMS versus having to call my broker. Yep. So um, talk to me a little bit about that. And I'm curious because we, we did a really in-depth demo on the, the brokerage process and Rose Rocket and I loved it. Um, we, I didn't look at the, the customer or carrier facing mm. side as far as that goes, but I'm curious if you could speak to that a little so, bit. So it's actually, um, it's really interesting. Both of those um, topics are interesting. The the customer-facing, shipper-facing, let's call it, uh, portals, and then the carrier-facing one. So the shipper-facing one actually kind of touches on the, the history of Rose Rocket as a company. We originally started actually as a shipper TMS. We were a system for shippers to upload their rates, manage the orders they were giving to brokers and carriers, et cetera. Um, we eventually realized and, and pivoted to uh, brokers and, and carriers because shippers, you know, at the end of the day, their, their main bread and butter, their main focus is the thing that they do, the widgets that they make, right? Transportation is essential, it's important, it's important, but it wasn't their sort of like, it wasn't the, the burning issue topic of the day. Whereas if you were in, of course, a broker or a carrier, that is your business. The move, you know, we said it earlier, it's the movement of stuff. Um, so our original product was called Freight Next, terrible name. Um, but it, uh, it was focused on the shipper side of things. And we actually kept a lot of that code, a lot of that functionality, and it's become our customer portal, our shipper portal. So it's where you can, if you're a broker, you know, chat with your customer, right? You can upload documents to share with them. They can upload documents to share with you. They can see this. I want to yeah. pause right there because that is such, I absolutely love that. And mm. I've seen platforms that do it kind mm. of, but not great. And a lot of TMSs don't. But the fact where if you can upload a customer invoice and um, you can interact with your customer virtually and digitally like that, instead of having to manually yeah. do it through an email or a phone call, that is absolutely huge. Right. Um, so I just want to hit on that real quick because, I mean, that, Ben, we've talked about this numerous times. Paperwork getting lost or, hey, I might have put the wrong email in or this person doesn't work there anymore. It slows down the invoicing process, mm-hmm. which then delays how quickly you're going to get payment. Because remember, a customer's invoice, that 30-day terms or whatever you have them on doesn't start until they get that right. invoice. So if you sent to the wrong email address a month ago, they're not on the hook to pay that until they actually receive right. it. So I just wanted to hit on that real quick. So that I think that's awesome with the customer report. And I wanted to add one other thing too. So like, and this was years ago, um, you know, probably like six, seven years ago, but like I had a customer and we were able to communicate efficiently, not through a TMS, but like it was right when Skype came out and we were able to link our organizations. So back to the value mm. of being able to communicate mm. directly with your customer, right? It is such an advantage also over other brokers, right? Because everyone else is sending emails. There's other brokers working with my customer. There always are, yep. except my line was direct. So yep. when I needed an update, when there was an issue, when they needed something, they don't want to send an email and wait for somebody to respond because everybody's busy. And some people, that customer included, would receive on average three to 400 right. emails a day. So right. waiting for them to get to the email you sent to them was always a waiting game. So yeah. then you call. Well, now you created more work for them. What having this direct line like you guys provide gives you an advantage over the other brokers and it allows you to give them more value. Like, hey, when you need something, just shoot me a message. Yep. I'm here. It's open. Yep. You don't need to wait for me to get to the email, then call you back, then shoot you another email. It's it's first class what communication, wanna... right? Like your mm-hmm. messages are getting to the people. Um, without um, noise. Without noise. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. What I want to add here too, and we've said it before, is our, our customers, right, the shippers, they're not in the game of transportation. Mm -hmm. Transportation is just a necessity for them to conduct their business, right? So if they're producing widgets, they're in the business of making and selling widgets, not in getting widgets. So that's our job. If we can make that easier, 
that is going to solve so many problems and, and avoid headaches. That's the value, right? That's the value that brokers that brokers bring to the table. And mm-hmm. um, you know, the other the other aspect of this was the, the the carrier management piece. And I think that this is something you guys actually did an episode recently that I I strongly encourage everyone to listen to about building your carrier network. And I think that that's something that you know new brokers uh, specifically may not appreciate from from the get go. Um, you know, the, the benefits that come with finding carriers who you know intimately, as intimately as your own customer base, right? So that you can uh, know who to go to when you have an order on a certain lane, right? Who, who likes this backhaul as backhaul sort of thing? Um, and, you know, there's a lot of different ways that you can build that carrier network. And, and you guys do a great job in that episode explaining those things. And it's one of the areas that Rose Rocket has recognized a a need for as well. So we've got a product called uh, the Carrier Directory, where you can um, find carriers who are covering lanes that you need coverage for. Now, I, I don't mean it's like a it's not a load board per se. It's not a place necessarily where you, you know, post loads to go in the, in the episode, you guys use the, the fishing analogy, right? So, you know, you're, you need to cover a certain area. So you go fishing to go look for a carrier. Well, this carrier directory is like, is like fishing with a, uh, you know, a, a fish finder on your boat, right? It, it is helping you know who is in which area. And that's because the carriers are on Rose Rocket too. And I was yeah. going to ask that. So I was curious, where does that data come right. from? Because I think um, if you, I, I always love when a company and like you guys specifically, if you have access to data internally yourself mm. that you can then use to improve everyone else's abilities, that's amazing. I mean, so where is that data all yeah. coming from? So, I mean, like we, the way we see it is, you know, we definitely don't want to get in the, in the way we just want to facilitate, right? In other words, um, you're a broker you've got an order that needs to go from A to B. I'm a carrier. I'm using Rose Rocket as well. Um, My drivers are using the Rose Rocket driver mobile app. The trucks are also equipped with, you know, name the ELD. um, So we know exactly in real time where the trucks are. If you and I are both on Rose Rocket, we can connect our Rose Rocket in a way that it's almost like it's one TMS, right? Of course, there's clear boundaries as far as what data sure. is shared, but using the, um, the real-time visibility as an example, if you and I are partners, right? We, we've, we've found a synergy on a certain lane, let's say, and you're always giving me business on a certain lane. Um, I'm comfortable with you enough that I'm going to dispatch it to a driver. I'm going to turn on the visibility toggle. You will be able to see where in the world my driver is from his ELD. That's when awesome. that driver uploads the signed proof of pickup or the signed proof of delivery, it gets shared with you immediately. There's no, there's no more emails or phone calls. Where is the driver? You know, send me this this proof of delivery so I can invoice. That's the kind of stuff that we want to facilitate. The the like what is happening today in email and phone, as we all know, um, is going to go the the way of the dodo, uh, and yeah. and that requires a system like Rose Rocket. So I want to I want to dig a little deeper onto the carrier yeah. side because you brought up two things. One is the the document uploading and imaging part. Um, it's the same thing we just mentioned with with our shippers mm. and our customers, right? Is that um, so many times I have seen brokers that you know it takes them a week yeah. to track down a POD and an invoice, or they realize after a month they're like. I never got my commission on this load and, and I'm looking, I'm like, oh, we carry yeah. never sent their stuff. And I'm like, you know, you can, yeah. you know, you should be able to, you know, track down all this stuff, but you guys have the ability where the driver or that carrier can just upload their yep. documentation digitally right. and boom, brokers got access to it. Now, the other piece of that is, is uh, sourcing capacity, mm-hmm. which has really been one of the biggest hurdles that brokers have run into oh, yeah. this year and um and it's probably going to be sustained in you know into 2022 for a bit um but having data and information and analytics to give you a sense of where capacity is which carriers are running certain lanes yep. right um i think that having data and information from your tms versus just having to rely on load boards is it's a game changer for brokers so um, I'm curious, yeah. I, I, I want to ask you to speak to that a little bit yeah. further on how, how a broker can use 
your platform for sourcing capacity? Is there um, like integrations with load boards or are they, is there like rating data yeah. or you mentioned obviously your the, you could see your trucking mm -hmm. or that, that carrier side capacity and all that, but what does that look yeah, like? Yeah, so I mean, um, it's all of the above really. Um, for example, integrations with load board, load boards, of course. So you've got a load that you need to cover. You can post it immediately uh, to your load board, right? Or load boards. Um, no extra data entry. You know, you're not doing the swivel chair thing between two systems. You create the order in Rose Rocket. You post it to the load board. Done. Um, the other side of that is the carrier directory piece. Um, so you've won a piece of business that is uh, regular. You know, it's going to be, you know, moving once or twice a week, let's say, over a given lane. Um, you can go to the carrier directory and you can find carriers who, have at, who are advertising that that's what they cover and that's what they're looking for. So, you know, you look at the other side of the coin. Um, so you kind of have a, a the carrier yeah. pretty much is setting some sort of a profile when they exactly. set up that says, here's what I, here's my equipment. Here's the lanes I like to service. Right. And now on top and of that, that is the information that brokers need exactly. to have to save time. And, and to be clear, like, you know. It's not just a directory, right? It's all the other stuff I just talked about where, you know, sure, you could go do a Google search, right? You can go start to uh, do that Google search and spend hours trying to find carriers who uh, are not on Rose Rocket, who are using, you know, Excel spreadsheets or what have you. Um, or you go to the directory and you find a partner who is using the same system as you. And, you know, when we, you know, when we talk about like, carrier onboarding, right? Well, the onboarding is pretty light when both of you are using the exact same system, right? When yep. um, you when you have an integration with, you know, name the carrier compliance and you can see, okay, on, you know, SaferWatch, this carrier, excellent uh, compliance score. They're on Rose Rocket, so I know that they believe in visibility, transparency. I can connect with them. This is going to be a great experience for me, the broker. And then again, of course, most importantly, my shipper, my customer. Gotcha. So I want to ask this next is because um, some of the folks on our show may be overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. They're probably overwhelmed by half the stuff Ben and I talk about because it's, it's, it's beyond where they're at in their in their brokerage career. But let's say you're a new mm -hmm. broker or um, you're in your first six months and you know, you're you're just trying to focus on the basics yeah. of getting the job done. I, I want to get customers and manage them in my system. I want to be able to find trucks and move loads. I don't care about all the bells and whistles. I just want to get myself off the ground. So, you know, what should brokers be looking at as far as capabilities and features in a TMS? Yep. Um, let's say if they're new or if they're advanced, what, what are some of those things when someone's evaluating? Yeah. We always recommend don't just look at one platform and go with it if you like it compare them against each other and see what's what's best for you. So what are those yeah, for sure. items that you should be looking so, at? So, I mean, you know, there's the brass hacks things, right? You know, you should be able to create a quote and uh, issue a, a quote from the system. You should be able to have sort of a, a carrier management module where you can, you know, keep a profile for the carriers that you use. You should be able to, of course, you know, dispatch and send uh, emails um, uh, um, to, or dispatching information to the carers. That's, that's you know, brass tacks, right? Um, and there's a lot of systems that, that do that. I think that if you are, even if you're very, very early and, uh, you know, you're new to brokerage, but you have a growth mindset, you need to think about whether or not the TMS you are going with is a system that is open to integrating with other systems, the other systems that you're going to use, right? So, you know, if you if you don't have, if you don't go with a TMS that has, you know, an integrations marketplace where you can kind of go and, and you know, point and click at, okay, this is, I'm going to use QuickBooks for my financial management stuff. I'm going to use SaferWatch for carrier compliance, you know, uh, DAT for, for the load board. Um, if it doesn't have that ability, then the TMS that you're looking at probably is just a glorified spreadsheet. Right. You know, there's spreadsheets, That's very true. <laughs> right. There's spreadsheets. Yeah. And then there's uh, TMS platform. TMS is like Rose Rocket that actually play nice with other systems. Anything in between that is just a glorified spreadsheet. Um, so, yeah. So it's integrations. Uh, you know, we have an open source API, which, again, what does that mean if you're brand new to brokerage? And it didn't mean anything to me before I joined Rose Rocket. But basically, Rose Rocket um, 
uh, makes our integration points public. So you could go and find a developer if you wanted, or if you were, let's say, you know, you've grown your brokerage and you've hired some IT consultants or you've hired some IT folks and you have a, you know, a custom thing that you want to do, we give you that ability. We empower you to do that. Again, something you're probably going to grow into. Um, and then I think the last thing is like, again, you know, net network TMS, uh, the, the idea that um, the TMS should allow you to collaborate with people beyond, you know, um, you know, sending an email from my system to your system. I mean, actually connecting the system, EDI, APIs, th those kinds of things. I hope that answered the question. I think the collaboration yeah. piece is that's the future of where our industry is going. Yeah. And I think the, I think the companies that will succeed are the ones that embrace that. hundred right? percent. If we can think about this, I mean, if a company can save the cost of salaries for three people because they can replace that process with um, automation, and then they could reuse those yeah. three people somewhere else to help grow their company, yeah. right? Yeah. Now that payroll is not going just to sustain a company; it's going to grow their company, or they just don't need the people at all, yeah. or they you know they don't have to hire additional people. That is, I don't know if this is a. I, I, if this is a rose rocket ism, but we we refer to it as a coopetition, right? So it's not <laughs> it's not it's not you know pure competition, me against them. It's not you know a hundred percent you know kumbaya you know sort of thing. There's that in between where it's like yes, you know we're I'm not trying to run a business. I'm trying to make a a, a living. Uh, you're running a business. You're trying to uh, make a living. There's synergies and how do we how do we find the folks that have complementary synergies to me and that's the uh that's the golden ticket gotcha ben you got anything you want to add in as far as uh the must-haves or things to look at i mean i think we covered like because you've used a couple different <clears throat> platforms yourself yeah and i think and to be honest it's kind of a lot of what we talked about, right? Like there's some that I've worked with were really great. There's some that I've worked with that I thought were very poor. And then there are things that like I look for because I know that no matter where you want, there was a quote I heard the other day. It said, greatness is just doing your best incrementally over and over mm. again, right? There it like, is. That Ben's uh, proverb of the week. <laughs> but the reality is, is that's what we're talking about. A TMS saves you minutes and moments. It doesn't usually replace, like when you look at it, you're not going to go, hey, I don't need to do that all day, right? So right. I think when people are evaluating it, it's hard to miss how much time you get back because genuinely most brokers don't know how much time they're spending on these tasks in the first place. Right. So to Nate's point, like, what we've been doing in this industry and we continue to do is put more people in front of these things. Right. In fact, the biggest companies are exactly the proof of this. They hire more human beings because the technology doesn't play nice, right? With anybody yeah. or everybody. And if you really so, understand I how much time you're spending on these things, then you can start actually evaluating like, okay, I'm paying 45 grand a year for this human being to do a task that I could eliminate 30% of what they're doing. They can do 30% of this other thing, but right. most people aren't digging down to see how much these things actually take them time wise. And the most important thing is that that other thing is more valuable to yes. your business, to growing your business. Like, do you really want to spend money on somebody filling out a spreadsheet to be emailed to somebody else? No, you yes. don't. You right. want those people on the phones, introducing themselves, you know, managing marketing material online. Um, it's those kinds of things, the stuff that actually grows your business. So I want to add in one last thing that I personally look look at with any kind of software is the user interface, user experience, right? Um, I have seen, mm -hmm. so when I worked for an asset-based company, our TMS was, <laughs> it was awful. I felt like I was on a DOS system. Yeah, um, probably were. <laughs> and I mean, we've all probably seen systems like that. Where we're like, what is going yeah. on here? Um, obviously, I think um, with the release of mobile apps, web-based platforms, cloud based uh, TMSs, people have realized that with technology and the younger generation, we're used to having at our fingertips a good user experience. Like if you've got an iPhone, right? Apps look nice and clean, yep. right? Um, versus, you know, the old school Windows 95 playing the chess game or whatever, where it's like very archaic, right? So the, the user experience, user interface, the, 
you know, minimize the number of clicks mm. it takes, make it look visually appealing so I'm not dreading looking at my monitor. And that is one of the things that I saw with Rose Rocket when we did the demo that blew me away was how clean it is, how easy the workflow was from beginning to end. Because I think what we did was we started with a load from scratch, mm. cradle to grave. We built the load all the way through um, getting a dispatch and deliver. And it was so fast, so easy. And um, that's th that's personally what I look at. And I know there's some people that don't care, and there's a a lot of people that do care about that, so that's that's my take. I, I gotta I gotta share a quick story about that. Um, it's part of my job to at Rose Rocket to kind of bring uh, new hires uh, up to speed on you know the status of the industry and what our customers do and, and how they do it. And uh, I, I won't forget the one of the first times I brought a, you know a very junior engineer along with me to to visit a customer and to see what systems they were using, and they were using you know, a DOS-like system that you were talking about or something a little bit better than that. It was a, a legacy system. And on the drive home, uh, I asked what they thought. And the the engineer said, I don't believe, I can't believe that that system was made by humans, right? It, it was so <laughs> unintuitive, so difficult to learn and use. He's like, it could only, you know, who, only a robot would have built that, right? And so I really appreciate that, uh, those comments about, design, our design, our UX, uh, we take a lot of pride in it. We invest a lot in it uh, because we know that it's what the users of, of today expect. I can tell you. You're absolutely right. The, it's, it's not even like, a, it's not even like a, an add-on. It's like, that's a baseline right. minimum in my yeah. opinion. If I, don't, if I don't like the look and feel of a piece of software, I'm not buying yeah. it. So. <laughs> and I think that goes with a lot of things in life, by the way. And I, I mean, I'm not going to name the company, like, but they right. went about it and really didn't pay any attention to the UI or the user experience. Right. And when I went to use it, it was noticeable. In fact, it was noticeably slower because they didn't think through the way somebody uses it. So that experience was, in fact, it was literally siloed. There were different mm. information right. silos on different servers to go from one task to the next. So right. every time you had to do for a broker, what seems like the next logical thing to do, the system didn't see it that way. So you had to literally wait for it to load and you're like, when we got on, I got on a call with him and I was like, well, why does this? And he goes, oh, well, we had to solve something. We Our data was running too slow, so we split it into servers. And I went, right. I get that. Right. But you do understand from your customer, the people that use this, like you just made this experience like unpleasant. Like right. when you have to wait for it to load every time you do a normal task, yeah. like it becomes an unpleasant yeah. experience and then you don't want to use it. And I think those are the things, and we see that everywhere from the way we get in our car, where the radio is to where a doorknob is, like we design yeah. things for use. And when they're not, we notice yep. that. Definitely. So I'm, this might sound like a dumb question, Rob, yeah. but where is the, the, are you guys on, on the cloud? Oh, yeah. Is that where all the data yep. is? Okay, yeah. all right. Because I mean, it, it's, it's wild to me now how having a TMS that's hosted on a local server, I have, Personally, at multiple companies, run into issues where when that server's got an issue, it is a bad, bad day. day, bad and week. It, like every minute feels like an hour, and then like you get your phones blowing up. Everyone's like, "What's going on? What's going on?" Um, go, so just the whole idea. My, the company I'm with now recently made the choice to switch to the cloud from local server, and it is like yeah. weight <laughs> off my chest yeah. and shoulders. Just like, okay, we don't have to worry about outages anymore. Yeah. But uh, well, so hey, before we before we wrap up mm -hmm, the content mm -hmm. part here, I wanted to give you um, one last yeah. chance to anything that we didn't cover on Rose Rocket, and um, how can folks get a hold of you? Yeah. You know, what what would they you know if they want to get a demo or anything? Yep. Any cool tools that we haven't mentioned. So uh, definitely visit roserocket.com to uh, check us out and, and to book a demo. Um, there's a way to, to to book a demo right right online. Um, and the other thing that I I feel it's important to to say is that um, you know we were, we've been talking about like purchasing a TMS and how how important that is. Uh, I want it to be known that there's there's a freemium version of Rose Rocket. So let's say you're just starting out. Let's say you you know you you've got a small business that you're trying to nurture. We appreciate that. Rose Rocket appreciates that. Um, so just do yourself a favor. Don't start that spreadsheet. Um, go check us out and and book a demo. There's a freemium version of it to get your feet wet, to get things going. And as you grow, you know, as and we hope to, to help you grow and facilitate that with all the stuff that we've talked about today. Um, you know, we we grow with you, and and we kind of we see it as a really important. It's part of our you know philosophy, our our belief that 
Um, we need to bring value to our customers. And of course, there's no better measurement of value than, than growth. Um, so yeah, roserocket.com and you can book a demo and, and speak with uh, one of my colleagues. Awesome. We'll make sure we put a, uh, a link to your website in our episode notes and in the description on YouTube. So, uh, well, hey, we're going to we got three questions to, uh, to cover here from our listeners. But before that, I got to give a shout out to our friends over at Lean Solutions Group. Reminder, Trey Griggs will be on with us next week to talk about probably he's just going to make fun of the Buffalo Bills because he's a Chiefs fan. <laughs> but um, everyone's growing. In, well, I shouldn't say everyone. The good brokers are growing right now. They've taken advantage of um, the market and with just the consumption going up. So the, the need to hire and staff your brokerage office has gone up. So Lean Solutions Group, they've got the nearshore staffing model where you can get folks from their offices in Colombia, South America, at a fraction of the cost. These are great U.S. speaking folks that are trained in brokerage. And then you, all you have to do is you, you go through a small interview process to pick who you want to put on your team and then show them how to use your TMS. Maybe it's Rose Rocket. Maybe it's something else. Who knows? But uh, check them out at leangroup.com, and we'll make sure Trey can talk to us more about them a little bit further next week. All right, so first question, and this is where you can tell that our, our range of listenership ranges from the novice to the experience. The first question we had today from a listener is, what is a lane? Mm. And when I saw it, I almost laughed, but then I thought to myself, before I got into logistics and transportation, I didn't know what a lane was either, right? Because people talk about, oh, which lane are you, you know, what lanes do you have available? What lanes are you quoting or working on, whatever? Um, a lane is simply an origin to a destination, right? Atlanta to Chicago, that's a lane. Chicago back to Atlanta, is a different lane, right? Because a lane is where it's coming from and where it's going to, and that has a lot of effect on the cost to ship in that lane because of you know the the geography for one point, um, where the trucks are located, volume, uh, the weather when you get to this time of year. Do you guys have anything else to add in on lanes? Yes, lanes one The thing is, and it's funny. I was thinking of this yesterday. Oh, because I think we saw this question yesterday. I think it came from a listener yesterday. I was thinking about this when I was yeah. driving and. The, the the way it was explained to me first was it's abbreviated. Lane is short for shipping lane. And they were like, it's, yes. it's mm-hmm. just literally the lane. And they were like, when you think about it, like it's like a bowling alley or anything else. It's from yeah. the origin to the destination. And you're right. Like, yes, Atlanta to Chicago and Chicago to Atlanta are two different lanes. And as Rob pointed out, it's because of the supply and demand on each side, the supply right. of trucks yep. and the demand for those trucks. Like we, I use the analogy of... Uh, Boston, Massachusetts is a is a great reference. So think about the geography and how much they consume versus produce. Um, a lot of trucks don't want to go to Boston because they can't get a load out of Boston. Reason being, freight gets shipped into Boston, but they don't produce enough to ship out of there. So a truck has to drive empty or deadhead to another location that right. has freight to, to then pick up and ship. So that's the lane for you. Um, Next question: How can some freight brokers not live in the U.S.? Uh, and this is a this is a great question. Um, and more, spe- I'll talk about the North America piece first, but I'm going to talk about the the worldwide piece because when we talk about freight brokerage uh, and in the United States, it's all licensed from the Department of Transportation, the, the FMCSA, Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration. Now that being said, I live in Buffalo, New York. We literally border. Ontario, Canada. We have three bridges in Western New York that cross from New York to Canada. And a lot of our workforce before COVID was coming over those bridges and into Canada. I had, I had professors in college that, that lived in, um, I think it's St. Catharines, mm-hmm. Ontario, which is right over Fort Erie. Uh, my grandparents are from Fort Erie, Canada. So you think about the geography of the U.S., whether you're in the the southern states that border Mexico or the northern states that border um, Canada. And I think there's a stat, maybe, Rob, you can help me out here. I think 90 percent of the Canadian population lives within like 100 miles of the U.S.-Canada border. Yeah, if you ever look at one of those like – Sorry. Yeah, we rely on each other with both um, workforce and – capacity for for trucks right so we have a lot of cross-border freight in the u.s so for that reason there's a lot of i work with a lot of freight brokers that are they live in canada but they're brokering u.s freight or they, they do a little bit of both um now let's talk worldwide um i've seen folks in south america obviously we talked about lean solutions group they've got folks in colombia um i've had folks in ukraine in india um 
UK, Australia. And the reason being is, you know, you're not required to be a US citizen to work in this industry, but by no means, it doesn't make you any better at the job. Um, I live in New York, doesn't mean I can't move freight in California, right? I mean, it's for 3000 miles away, but with the, you know, technology and the interconnectivity, and plus what I think is another thing that people forget about is time zones, right? Someone's daytime across the across the world allows them to operate on a normal schedule, but service the US overnight when trucks are driving a lot of the time too. And I think that's where there's a big benefit to people having a dispatcher operations set over in Eastern Europe or um, further east from that. Uh, but, you know, I will give one caution. Um, certain, I've seen certain, I think it was like truck stop that if they detected an IP that was out of the country, their security team flagged it. You need to make sure that you, you know, you check the box, cross your T's, dot your I's to make sure that your connectivity is working across the board like that. You guys have any other input on the, um, on how that Brokers that are not in the, in the U.S. I, I think you covered kind of all that. I was curious to hear what Rob was going to say about, you said with everybody living within yeah. 100 miles, or what is what was the stat? 90% of the Canadian population lives within 100 within hundred miles of the border with the U.S. Yeah, it just it gets too cold the further north you go, right? So you look at one of those, it's it's kind of a cool thing. You, you look at one of those satellite images, right, where it shows you the, uh, the, the ambient light coming from the cities. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's all along the, the, the border. That's all I was going to add yeah. there. Yeah. Think about like on the East coast, yeah. Montreal, yeah. um, just, that's just North of New York, yeah. Toronto. Like I said it before, it's an hour and a half to two hours from Buffalo. I don't know. I went to a Red Sox blue Jays game and I, I <laughs> waited like three hours because it was a Friday and rush hour, but whatever. <laughs> um, and you go out West, yeah. right. To the West coast, the, the same thing applies. And all you know, all the way across that, that border, a lot of those cities are there. So. Yeah, good stuff. Um, all right, last question comes from one of our listeners. What insurance policies do I need as a freight agent compared to a licensed broker and why? Um, so short answer is you don't need any <laughs> legally, right? A, a licensed freight broker needs to have a surety bond. Um, we recommend a general liability policy, contingent cargo, and whatever else your customers may want. But if you're a, a contracted 1099 freight agent that's working for a brokerage, your brokerage has those policies. And you as an individual agent that's subcontracted by them, you don't have to have any of your own insurance. Now, as a caveat to that, um, if you have a larger operation and you've got, let's say, 8 to 10 employees, you've got at least office space, um, you're probably going to want to have um general liability in case somebody slips trips or falls in your office and that's on you and you want to cover your butt on that there may be some workers comp requirement depending on where you operate or live um what i would recommend is get with a, a trusted insurance agent and talk through your situation because ben you and i are not insurance agents and rob i'm nope. pretty sure you're not nope. either maybe maybe you just nah. have that in your back pocket too but um i'm never going to give um, you know, concrete advice on insurance or legal matters because I'm not a lawyer or a, an insurance person, but I can tell you from experience that um, there are instances where you would probably want to have something in place to protect yourself because insurance is meant for one thing, it's to offset risk. So the larger operation, the more complex it is, the more risk you're going to probably want to offset. So any, you guys have anything to add? No, to I just piece? learned a lot. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Ben, you got anything? Yeah, pretty comprehensive. Well, hey, awesome episode. Rob Doherty from Rose Rocket in, uh, you know, the, my neighboring city of Toronto. Right. So lo love to see it. Love <laughs> to have you on here. Uh, and again, uh, we'll put a link in the show notes, but it's roserocket.com. Mm -hmm. um, that's the best way to get a hold of you that's guys. That's the best way, for sure. Awesome. Well, cool. Thanks for joining yeah, us thank you for today, having Rob. Me. You got any, any closing final thoughts? No, I really appreciate the opportunity to uh, to speak with you guys. And, I, you know, kudos to you. I think this podcast, I was cruising around a bunch of the episodes before I, I got on this one. I shared a bunch with my uh, colleagues because I think it's a great resource to kind of learn about the uh, uh, the needs of brokerage and how, how that works. Awesome. We appreciate yeah. that. Ben, Thanks. any closing thoughts from Whether you? Whether you believe you can or believe you can't, you're right. And until next time, go Bills.